Welcome back. My last guest this evening has had a great year with rave reviews for her live gig. She's currently recording a new album. We're going to chat to her in a moment. But first, this is a very special treat, singing one of her older songs, I Am Stretched On Your Grave. Please welcome the fantastic Sinead O'Connor.
It's time we were together for ice of the earth and a more by the weather. Oh my God! The worst thing about going on telly, you always stand on the host toe, no matter what you do. <laughs> well, you if you're wearing big man's boots I like know. that, would you never wear bare feet like? I should take them off. That was. Yeah. Oh God, that was heart stopping. Like it was. Good. Uh, so. Well, incredible. I had it. We had not Mandela in mind, didn't we? Really. That's yeah. what we had in mind. So. Did you? Uh, do you go to a funny place when you when you're singing that? Are you gone deep down into yourself or? history or something, <laughs> or is it just like, okay, sing the song? Do that. Well, no, but uh, the way I sing, the way I'm trained is, is kind of what I would call the Stanislavski method of singing. It's, it's acting, really. You're just, so you're playing a character, so you have yeah. to find out who is the character in the song. Even if it's a song you wrote, it's possibly a character song. So who's the character, who you're talking to? That can change any night. You're trained the same way as an actor, like, so you're drawing on sense memories and shit, but you're, you're not going back to your own story or your own history or whatever. But, there are things in our, in our own lives that we would identify with or whatever. So you, so you can employ so different you, sense what, memories each night. What are you channeling on what there now? In, in well, it depends. Like, different nights I might have to imagine I'm talking to a particular person or I have to change who I'm talking to. Or depending on whether they're in or out with you or... or no, no, no. It's just so that you don't run out of material with which to work from inside. You know what I mean? The same thing would get boring. Like, after, after whatever... 25 years or so singing Nothing Compares, I had to begin to change who am I singing it to and why am I saying what's my motivation in the scene because I was losing interest. Yeah, 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 I can imagine. Interest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So. Um, listen, by the way, I heard you had a big day last week. Did I? Yeah, it was your birthday, wasn't it? Oh, right, okay. Last Saturday? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as you will have noticed during all the breaks and the way we like to sing Happy Birthday around here, and guess what? <laughs> I made you a trifle. Did you? Yeah. I love trifle. Is it a real trifle? Yes, I made I, it with Nevin earlier. Trifle. I brought it, I brought it in Nevin. Did and you? Just, because hang you on, know hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, I love trifle. I'm starving as well. I know you love trifle, Oh my trifle, God, I love yes. trifle. How do you know I love trifle? Because... Remember, you said you, you go to Mary Coughlin's at Christmas because you love her trifle. Totally. So, oh, let's Brendan. See. Okay, I, blow, I, I knew you were blow out the candles first. Thank you, darling. I knew you were Happy birthday ah, to you. you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, Nigella. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> well... Well, Brendan, I've, I, I don't know what to say. I have never quite tasted such great cream. <laughs> <laughs> is it nicer than, is it nicer than in Mary, it's actually Nevin McGorry's well, cream, Well, I've never right? tasted Mary. <laughs> is it nicer than Mary Coughlin's trifle? Well, it, it, it's different, put it this way. I'm, I'm still taking it in. <laughs> I'm just getting past the cream. Okay, yeah. You have to get past the cream because that's when it gets really fruity, Sinead. It's very nice. I do really love um, trifle. Yeah, because you, 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 you do go to Mary Coughlin's at Christmas and she does well, make a lovely trifle, doesn't she? We did go last Christmas and we're going this Christmas, going which is handy Christmas? for me because I can't cook a damn thing, and she can. Okay, so is, the whole family gathers there and everything and everyone well, gets on okay? myself and Frank and the kids and Mary's fella and all this, a 21st century family. Yeah, thing, cool. Yeah. I think Mary said last year that you played Twister then. Do an interview and eat at the same time. What? <laughs> It's the first time. It's great. I've never tried to do an interview and eat trifle before. I know, yeah. They're, it's they're, kind of interesting. They try and discourage me from eating when we're on I'm television, sorry. apparently. I'm fine. Okay, I'm listen, starving. you can have the rest of the trifle later. Can we chat for a minute? No, no, it's good. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> did they not give you sandwiches beforehand, no? They did, but there wasn't any cream. <laughs> Are you trying to avoid now me talking to you by eating it? You're no. figuring, if I can make ten minutes go by without e eating the trifle, he doesn't have to give me a thing. No, go on. Uh, yeah. So, First so, time someone doesn't want me to shut up. <laughs> not at all, you see. I, 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 I'm not one of those people who thinks... You, do you think everybody wants you to shut up and that you've got... Not to everybody. Be <laughs> what? Not everybody. Yeah. Do you think yeah. a lot of people want you to shut up? Or do you not think people think, yeah, she's right? I don't think people really... Give, uh, hopefully enough of a toss to really think about it, do you know what I mean? I, I suppose, um, like, what's the way to put it? 
I think the real world and the online slash media world are completely different places. Do you know what I mean? I totally. think in the real world, people aren't stupid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, do you think that whole that whole online thing and the way, like you know, the, the Miley Cyrus thing, t then turns into this international incident because of kind of online? It's changed really the way th the way things are in the world, hasn't it? The 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 internet thing. I don't know. I think it's it's not policed yet, which I think is quite dangerous. It's it's not. Uh, there are no. Uh, you're allowed to say and do things on the internet that, that are illegal in the real world, and that I think is a big problem. I think it's a very frightening place, the internet, in, in many ways for that reason. Like, mm. you know, um, you know, we could go on for ages about examples, but you know, dreadful remarks that are allowed to be left about all manner of people. For example, things that you couldn't say in the real world that you would, you know, be in trouble for. Things that you couldn't do, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah. that's yeah. that's my experience of it. That, that that it can be a very bullying place, and it can, it can bullying anywhere can cause deaths. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's what happens. And it does whip up quite quickly on the internet, people. doesn't it? Yeah, and I mean, we, you know, there's a, a slew of very young people and you know ending their lives and ending up in dreadful situations because of things like you know remarks not being policed and it's not yeah all over the internet it's everybody and what's very interesting to me is that um there's no number you can call for anyone google youtube it's hard, it's hard you to can't happen, call and it? go look who's who's moderating the remarks here <laughs> and yeah. the, the the reason you can't is because nobody is which is really weird it's like why can you why are things that are illegal in our world not illegal there it's really yeah. Very strange, and especially you, when you, you know. Have you uh, felt bullied yourself, like in, in when when those storms have whipped up about you and stuff? Have you felt bullied by it? Well, I definitely, um, I um, as you know, I was um, mistakenly diagnosed about ten years ago with it with a mental illness, which luckily I don't have. Um, but I had a very interesting experience um, living as a person who was perceived mistakenly or or otherwise, you know. And I found that quite depressing that, that people would, again, you know, and but actually this does happen in the so-called real world as well, that people, yeah. if you are perceived mistakenly or otherwise to have a mental illness, people use that as something with which to kick the shit out of you rather than be nice to you. And the, so the only time I found it difficult being bullied was when that was the thing that was being used to bully me. Crazy bitch, basically. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think words like crazy should be allowed to be used as terms of abuse, you know, or associated words as terms of abuse. You wouldn't say to somebody, you're cancerous piece of shit, or you, you know, you wouldn't yeah. say to somebody, you know, whatever you could, you know, you, you, it, it creates deaths. Again, this is a situation where people suffering from mental illnesses have to try to, you know, walk down. It's like a guy trying to walk down the road with two broken legs and having to act like he hasn't got any broken legs because if someone finds out he does, they're going to come and stamp on his broken legs. Mm. That, that's what it's like. So that's the only time I found it difficult, you know, being treated like shit as such because of being Sinead O'Connor, you know. Um, you said about being mistakenly, you were mistakenly diagnosed with bipolar. Yeah. Oh, just, sorry, just, ten, just ten to quickly ago. finish that point, yeah. the, only, yeah. the only reason it's dangerous, that kind of stuff, is because it, it doesn't stay on the page or the screen. It actually translates down into how people treat you in your life. That's what's dangerous about it. Okay. It'd be all right if somebody just wrote it down and so-and-so is a fucking hand, then grand, that'd be that. But it's the yeah. fact that everybody else in your life seems to think they have license to treat you like you're completely invalid. Everything you think, do say, feel. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? So you're constantly, you're like the guy rolling the thing up the hill, you know. And, and do you, when you say you, yeah. do you feel that that translated into your own life as yes, well? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It does into everyone's life. But the worst part, see, I'm a tough cookie. Even though I might be vulnerable, I might get hurt by things, I get back up again. I'm quite, I have a lot of steel in my backbone, you know. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who wouldn't have necessarily the same resources that I would. So if I, as a very tough person, would find those things difficult, the more important person is the one who's actually not so tough and those are the readers and the people who are exposed to these kind of you know bullying that go on and the, these are the people that end up dying they don't come out of their house because they see other people getting bullied so they don't go and say look I'm feeling suicidal or I'm feeling a bit depressed or I'm a bit frightened of how I'm feeling or whatever because we all live in a society where you know if people think anything like that about you they're going to treat you badly you know Weakness, which is terrible right. so despite you know, all this stuff about we're all terrible. talking about depression now and everything oh, well I mean this is. the same newspapers on the next page are crazy and someone and crazy and someone else and you know defining what's crazy which I think is hilarious that the media are the people defining what's crazy and what's not crazy when mm -hmm. you know they're, they're, they're making conscious decision to put a child level you know close-up pictures of Gaddafi getting his face blown off yeah. <laughs> that's insane if you ask me you know so, what I thought was nice yeah. about this year because I didn't particularly want to talk too much about like yeah. your, your, that kind of stuff that happened during the year what yeah. I thought was really nice was like uh, even looking at the reviews of you, you you did a gig the other night in the in the Royal yeah. Festival Hall in London 
and the reviews were fantastic and they were about music. Yeah. I'm not going to talk for that long, no, stop. No, no, it's just too good and I'm starving. But they were about music and I do think that this year there's been a refocusing on Sinead O'Connor, the artist, and on the immense power you ha your voice has and the power you, you have as a musician and the good you do with your voice and everything. Do you not feel that it's become more about the music and you've had a great mm. year musically like? Definitely, definitely. I think to some extent it always was. But yeah, it definitely got more around to that point now and I think maybe I got more focused on that as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed being on tour for the year. Sorry, I'm just sticking my stickers on here. I think years ago, my experience was though that um, around the time that I started making records, it also began rap. Um, and they, and there began to be the censorship and music thing went on. Do you remember the two live crew? Tipper Gore and the... the yeah, yeah, everybody started to... The music parents began against... to get censored and yeah. artists began to get silenced in all kind of clever ways. And if you couldn't silence certain artists, because, they, you, you know, it's a different system nowadays, what you had to do was um, crazy them, you know? And then, uh, to some extent, people were crazying artists like me anyway if they couldn't shut us up. So it, in some way, I'm, I'm not good at articulating how this links to the question that you've just asked me, but the fact that people are, that they're even doing that shows that your music is quite powerful. It becomes important to crazy the heroes. That they needed to. You understand? Know because yeah. the, the man as such, whoever the man is, doesn't have a vested interest in the young people of the world making the world a great place. So it's important to crazy the heroes of the young people and those are musicians generally. So so, you know, to some extent, there is no separation. It's like the dance around the dance thing, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though the words or the focus are not obviously on the music, they wouldn't be on you at all if not for the music. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's always a sense so, of, of that they were afraid of you, that... Um. Well, yeah, because we were, in that age, a lot of the musicians that were around, we were protest singers. That's where, whether yeah. we were rappers or whether whatever it was we were, we had yeah. come from protest music, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when rap came, that's when everybody began to get silenced. You know? Can I ask you something else? You, 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 I noticed in one of those reviews that you said the other night um, at that gig that you were wearing these big dark glasses. Do I have cream on my mouth? No. <laughs> that's a shame. You're wearing big dark glasses because you're quite shy. And like you had your eyes closed there now, which I don't know, was, was it a Shan Nose thing? Or are you quite a shy performer? <laughs> you're not shy now. You, you're a brazen thing now. But, um, I, <laughs> Are you shy? Yeah, I guess I am. I'm, I'm, um, I'm shy about getting looked at, yeah, in terms of on stage, definitely, yeah. I don't know why, but I am, yeah. I, I, I prefer to go off into my own world, so, yeah. I'm trying to look around a bit. Are you a shy person in, in, in life, like? Yeah, I mean, a mixture. I'm a closet exhibitionist. Yeah, because for a shy person, you do seem to attract a lot of attention as I well, do. then, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> closet exhibitionist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's listen, why I'm behaving myself with the trifle. Yeah, just about. No, I'm I, being really well behaved, I, 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 Brendan. I think they might <laughs> censor some bits of it. The network might go down again if you don't uh, take it easy. Yeah. There. And listen, listen uh, you're working on a new album, is that right? Mm, yeah. Of love songs. Yeah. Who's it about? <laughs> Lots of people. <laughs> really? I know. It's not. No, I just decided to write love songs. I hadn't. I never really wrote man romantic songs before. I'm lying, of course. Um, in terms of who it's about, but I never really wrote ma romantic songs, so I just thought I would. So. Yeah. So, and you're going to sing one of them for us now? Is this yeah. a, kind of a world exclusive? Yeah. Yeah. First time heard outside your bedroom. Yeah. Well, I only wrote this song last week. In fact, I only I haven't even quite finished writing it in the toilet in there. Um, <laughs> so okay. I hope it doesn't sound like it got written in the toilet. But um, we we. Were, demoed it already with drums and stuff and it's going to have horns and all it's got proper band on it but i can only play it here with guitar so it's just it's not going to sound as fantastic as it will finally okay. what's so. it called now i'm sorry as every time i come on here i have to explain that i never make any sense when i'm speaking as we all know the only time i make sense is when i'm singing so forgive me for waffling okay what's the song called it is called which i just figured out it's called um how nice a woman can be and who's it about again did you say it's called How Nice a Woman Can Be When She's Full of Trifle. <laughs> I'll have to shove it over here. So you have to sit They're saying in my ear, ask her about the B&Q tattoo. But well, funny enough, know. I'm not going to ask you. Well, because me, you know what? Me. She's got Harvey Norman tattooed on her arse as well. Is exactly. That you were telling me beforehand. Tell them to come and ask me to my face. <laughs> come on, come here and say that. Do you remember people used to say that? Come here and say that. <laughs> or I'd stitch it. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like it. I'd say you wouldn't have. Go on, sing the song. Okay. No, I'm not good looking And I don't do nothing And I don't say nothing And I don't mean nothing Practice
practically good for nothing but loving you, but loving you. Please, baby, let me be a slave. Please let me clean your house all day. <laughs> Please let me try to bake your bread And tuck your sweet babies into their beds I'll show you how nice a woman can be I'll show you how nice a woman can be I'll show you how nice a woman can be If you'll only speak some sweet words about me I might even cook something actually edible Who knows, it might even turn Sorry, I'm so sorry. No one should ever interview me, really, should they? Because I just no, don't have to talk, which is why I'm a singer. But I, I, I'm I just going to say, it's really... ...hard to sing with a mouthful of cream. <laughs> Not at all. Listen, <laughs> you look great and you seem like you're in good form. Are you kind of I think in a good I place, am. yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you were saying to me, do you mind if I say, you were saying to me that um, one of the reasons you're looking well and feeling well and everything is that you're pretty much kind of coming off the medication you were mistakenly yeah. on. Is that Don't a... get it right, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was mistakenly diagnosed. I'm oh, sorry you tried to ask me about this earlier. I'll tell you how I was diagnosed. I don't know if I ever told you this. I, I went to the doctor, as the song says, uh, feeling quite depressed. I had my child was, was uh, five months old, my third child, and I was a bit depressed. And I went to the doctor, I said, I'm a bit suicidal, it's not me, I don't normally feel like that. And he rang up the local psychiatric hospital in front of me. I never met this doctor before. He rings a guy in the psychiatric hospital, says, oh, I've got Sinead O'Connor here in my office, she says she's suicidal. The guy on the phone goes, oh, well, from what I read about her in the paper, I'd say she has bipolar disorder. So that's actually how it came about. <laughs> but it suited me to believe it, because I thought, okay. great, I can take all these drugs and I'll be fine. But actually, they're quite depressing. However, if you are supposed to take them, it's really dangerous not to take them. So don't go taking your meds, getting off them unless you're supposed to. But yeah, I feel a whole lot better, put it that way. Like, they can mess up all, all manner of things in your life. They can be very depressing themselves, you know, so... Yeah. So I do feel better, yes. Brilliant. Well, listen, have a yes. great Christmas, and thank I you. hope next year is going to be a great year for you. I'd thank love you. to keep talking to you, but we have... And um, thank you so much for the trifle, the mouthful of cream. You, I'll, make you, I'll make you a trifle <laughs> so anytime, baby. He's never going to let me back in. Ladies and gentlemen, It's good that you can't say the shit on the yeah. late <laughs> 